Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Aaron Fragnito. Thanks for being on the show, Aaron. Good morning, Whitney. Glad to be here. No, I'm excited about this show and, and, and what you're doing in the syndication business. And, and it's a little different than some of the other guests, but it's a great, it's a great topic. And, I, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to digging into to how you've started this and what you're doing. So, uh, but a little about Aaron, he is the co-founder of People's Capital Group, also known as PCG. Host, he's also the host of the New Jersey Real Estate Network and a licensed New, Jer New Jersey realtor and a full-time real estate investor. He's completed over 250 real estate transactions, totaling more than $35 million in real estate in his career. So Aaron, thank you again for being on the show. Appreciate your time. Tell the listeners a little more about who you are and let's dive into what you're up to in the syndication business. Sure. So People's Capital Group is located in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and we buy all of our real estate around North Jersey. And, you know, what separates us from a lot of other syndicators is, you know, I was talking to an attorney years ago and he said, well, if you don't have $50,000 and uh, millions of dollars, then you can't start a real estate fund. And for years, I thought that was the case. And then one day I figured out by talking to my SEC attorney how to start a small syndication and buy less than $2 million buildings and start a small fund for each. And, and now we have a very successful real estate syndication. Um, so yeah, that's what we do in uh, Berkeley Heights. We buy small apartment buildings. We work with uh, about 30 local investors and um, we're teaming up with new investors every day. Wow. So tell me about like your, what, what were you doing right before you got into the syndication business? Well, I started as a realtor in this business. Uh, it was 2010. No one was buying houses. It was terrible. Uh, I made $500 in my first six months in real estate. And then um, I figured out how to do short sales. And to this day, I still work with a great short sale team, a company that negotiates it. And I would double in the deal. I would get it, be a disclosed dual agent. I would uh, have my buyers that I'd meet at my real estate networking events I'd go to. And, uh, you know, I would speak there. I'd, uh, I mean, I present how to fake it till you make it was one of the topics. That was, I could probably really, I, I could present a good how to fake it till you make it. But uh, it was great. So I would have my buyers and I would go out and I'd get the listings of the short sales and have the team negotiate it. And I figured out how to make some money there. And, and uh, eventually uh, started buying six units. My partner, Seth Martinez, who I worked with today, who does all the operations for our business. And, um, you know, that's how we started teaming up together and developed the management company. But yeah, getting started was uh, being a realtor really helped me. That was a great tool to get started. You know? Okay. So, so it's just interesting because I know a lot of people listening are trying to get started into this business. And so being a realtor, you said that was, it was very helpful. And, and in what ways? How, how did it help you or prepare you? Well, it gives you a title uh, when you don't have one right off the bat. You know, as a wholesaler, you're like, oh, I'm a wholesaler. What, what is that really? You know, especially getting started. We haven't done a deal yet. Um, it's, a, you know, going in and saying your wholesaler is tough. So I think have, being a realtor, you know, there's a board of uh, realtors, there's actual controls over the transactions of realtors. And it's a little more sophisticated than a wholesaling, I, I, I can assume, you know, but at the end of the day, um, it, it helped me make some money. You know, being a listing agent was um, not an easy buck, but it was not the hardest buck I've made in real estate. I think flipping houses is actually a harder dollar in real estate than being a list, listing agent, you know? Um, so being a listing agent is a great way to get started, a great way to make some money, especially in this market. Um, if you can work with the buyers, you can get the listings. And if you list, you last. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I had a point where I was doing about 40 transactions. I, I remember one year as a, as a realtor, and it was great. And that allowed me to put together some cash to buy some, uh, you know, small commercial real estate, you know, six unit. You know. So, so tell us about getting into that first syndication. Well, you know, the first syndication was a 25 unit because, uh, you know, syndication is actually when you pool capital together from a handful of silent investors and then buy a, buy a building. So that was a 25 unit we did in South Jersey. Uh, by that time, Seth and I had been working together for some time and we, uh, it was 2014. Um, so we had developed a nice little portfolio in, in Newark and, and in North Jersey areas and developing markets there. And, uh, to this day, we do very well at those markets. But we were buying a 25 unit um, outside of Philadelphia on the Jersey side. And this building was owned by uh, what ended up being the uh, town inspector. So he would come out and he would inspect us 
um, all, you know, for all types of things. And uh, we bought the property for a good price and we negotiated pretty hard the transaction as our job is to do for our investors. And so he wasn't too happy at the end of it, I guess. And, and I remember one of our tenants left a TV on the curb for a week and um, you know, he had fined us $11,000 for that. So, um, he was just throwing the book at us, just very, you know, difficult. Uh, so I learned there, don't buy uh, the property from the town inspector. And if you do, <laughs> if you leave the closing table happy, right? <laughs> Although sometimes getting a good deal, it's hard to do that and get a good deal. So, um, at the end of the day, uh, we ended up selling the building for a nice profit. Our investors were very happy and they reinvested us today. And, uh, but that was our first property, and, and we developed our own management company through that property uh, by necessity because we basically cycled through two management companies trying to find the right fit for that 25 unit in South Jersey. It's about 90 minutes from us, so it was a tough management job. And uh, one management company we hired just uh, was very reputable, very large, and just didn't do a good job. They overpromised and underdelivered and had high vacancies. And, weren't really going above and beyond for anything. And then we hired another smaller uh, family owned company and they would meet uh, tenants at the property. They would collect the first month's rent security deposit and they would do the same thing the next uh, couple hours later with someone else for the same unit and collect a bunch of money for the same unit and run off with the money. So we actually had to take them to a uh, small claims court and we'd, we'd won. Um, I wasn't even small claims, just regular claims. Wow. So, <laughs> yes. so a couple of questions though that, you know, like this first deal, I mean, you already sold it for a profit. Well, can, you know, congratulations to you and, and your partner, Seth. That's, that's, that's a, a big deal. That's great. Uh, but tell me like, how did you raise the capital for this first deal? Well, uh, we raised the capital uh, by our network. Um, we have a real estate networking group called New Jersey Real Estate Network. And um, we meet up on uh, the second Tuesday of the month at our office in Berkeley Heights. And, um, you know, we had just gone around networking. I had gone around to all different types of real estate groups for years and had good relationships and still do to this day. And I go speak at the different RIAs. And um, that's been, you know, a godsend to our network and our fundraising capabilities. And uh, out of the 30 investors we work with, I mean, I, I would say uh, 20 of them probably are from just straight networking, you know, real estate networking and things like that. Um, our real estate group. Um, Okay. So, so you, you had been networking, you had been at these groups for a period of time because, because that's, that's a lot of people's, I mean, so it's very difficult to raise the capital for the first deal for sure. And cause with no track record, hadn't been in the syndication business, but you had been in real estate. You had that title, you know, like you talked about, you know, at least you're a realtor, you had some, some credibility and then you, and you were speaking at these events. And so you, you had built credibility that way as well. Um, and so, you know, how, I guess, you know, how long had these people known you before, uh, before you had this first opportunity for them to invest in? Um, you know, it's hard to say. I, I would probably a year um, at least, uh, but, I, you know, for some of them, maybe not that long. Uh, it was hard. We hustled, you know, to raise the first capital. It was a hard raise and um, it was a challenge. So it was all about the public speaking. Uh, you know, I, I worked on my public speaking. I've always enjoyed it as well and kind of had an act for it. And getting up in front of the crowd, even as a beginner, um, I had, you know, a six unit, a two unit there, three unit there. You know, I had my transactions going as a, as a realtor. I was kind of like the deal guy. People knew I had deals. So being the deal guy as a realtor, you know, broker, wholesaler, uh, I could uh, really cherry pick the best deals coming in, buy them with, uh, by raising capital. And I still do that to this day. And also uh, sell deals to other investors and and, and make money there and also build my network because then you're talking to a bunch of people with money who buy real estate. Now, who, who better to invest in you than, than those uh, people? And, and a lot of times they're happy to sit back and, and let you uh, do the work as they get a check just because they realize how hard it is to do this real estate business. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how I raised my first capital. And um, you know, it's all about maintaining that relationship as well. But um, getting up in front of the crowd and speaking at these RIAs is really important you know, make a beeline for the owner of the group when you go to these things. That's the guy you will really want to be talking to because he's the one uh, calling the shots there and get up in front of the crowd. Make, you know, a lot of times the people running the shows need your help. You know, the two, I, I have a Rhea. I constantly have to bring in new speakers and, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, you, you know how it is. The networking business is a lot of work and approaching them and saying, Hey, I can come in and I can speak about buying my first two family, you know, perfect are right, perfect you know guys like me love that you know because then that's that's the story that as you build and build and build years later you kind of forget that story so much and you get a guy in there you know who's new to it you know so if you're getting started and you have something done you know maybe you flip the house talk about your first flip you know whatever you do in this business just 
get it out there to the world as much as you can. That's great advice. I, I couldn't agree with you more. You, you got to be get in the front. And it is, it is that person that's running the group that you need to get to talking to, you need to meet. Uh, and so uh, great advice, great advice. So, but tell me though, you know, like when you're speaking now, you know, what are you talking to the groups about now? How are you building that credibility even further? So at my real estate networking event, I talk about case studies we're doing right now, buildings we're buying, how we find them, how we analyze them, how we structure the LLC and raise the capital. And I have speakers come in. I have a nonprofit come in every uh, month, usually a different nonprofit. And they speak for about 20 minutes. I like to have a good cause and, and encourage my investors to give back a little bit as we do as well. And, and then we, I normally have someone to come and speak, maybe um, someone from Merrill Lynch who can talk about how you can borrow against your stock portfolio and safely uh, – you know, get some liquid cash and to invest in real estate and diversify uh, your stock portfolio in a real estate without selling your stocks. I'll maybe have someone come and talk about that or an IRA person who can talk about self-directing your IRA. Um, and uh, then I'll go on, I'll speak for about 45 minutes um, about what we do, how we work with the, our investors and run our, our syndication. Um, you know, we also have a residential section of our company that sells wholesale properties. So a lot of active investors come to our events and, and passive investors uh, around our area come as well. And, uh, you know, we make an effort to attract serious uh, people. We, we'd like to think, you know, uh, we go to a lot of real estate networking events and many of them are, are filled with many, many beginners, which is fine. You know, everyone starts somewhere and there's nothing wrong with that. But we try to kind of focus on higher level uh, you know, topics and um, therefore draw a bit of a a more experienced crowd to our RIA, we, we, we'd like to think. You know. So how, how did you know that it was time to sell that, that first syndication, that, for, that 25 unit? So uh, we, you know, we're having challenges with um, the management of it uh, being 90 minutes away. So on, by the time we had fired the second management company, we said, okay, we cannot bring in a third management company. We have to do this ourselves. To do this right, sometimes you have to do something yourself. So we developed our own management company by necessity. And today it is, a really awesome management company. I mean, in my opinion, the best management company I know because I've worked with many of them. <laughs> but um, so we we really you know developed a secret weapon there, and then um, we got you know realized the market was doing well, the building was doing well. We had turned it around with our management company, it was making a lot more money than it was when we first bought it, and uh, you know we had done a bunch of things. We turned over some utilities, and we had raised the rents and figured out uh, all, there was a lot of problem tenants. Most of the tenants were like, "Our last landlord let us skip a month. Why can't we skip a month?" So a lot of that, and um, over time, we were able to build the value of the property up by about um, 25% or so, and we sold it for a nice nice profit in just about 36 months, I think about 30 months, so uh, almost three, you know, less than three years, and uh, made a very nice profit there. So, uh, you know, it was a tough management uh, property. Uh, we learned a lot from it. We did very well with it. Um, we fine-tuned our management skills through the building. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what your first deal or syndication is all about sometimes. And since then, yeah. we've done even better. You know? So tell me, though, I know you're, you're doing lots of different sizes of deals. And I think you had mentioned before we started recording, even like a six unit. You, um, and, and so you're syndicating deals that are, say, four to six units as well? Right. So well, not four units. Our minimum is six. Um, so I do syndicate six unit properties. I just did one in January. I raised 165000 from one accredited investor and started a 506C and, um, you know, bought the property. And, and you can do that. Uh, you don't need 50 grand to start a, a syndication. You just, you know, to, to get a PPM well-developed, a private placement memorandum, you do. Um, but talk to your SEC attorney. Mine advised me that we can work with the LLC operating agreement in certain scenarios and notify the SEC properly with the, you know, the proper uh, filing fees, which is like 1200 bucks, you know, to file a fund in New Jersey, actually. You know, it's the PPM that costs a ton. So obviously, uh, you know, don't take legal advice from me, but talk to your attorney and that, you know, if he advises you as such, then that's, you can do that. And uh, here in Jersey, we, we do syndications as such with a very in-depth operating agreement. And that avoid uh, that allows us to avoid the PPM in certain cases. Wow. So, so I know there's some listeners I know that are saying, well, wait a minute, Aaron, you know, why wouldn't you just uh, JV that, you know, as, as opposed to doing a syndication, why wouldn't you just, you know, partner with that, with that investor? So essentially the difference between a JV and a syndication is that the investor does not have a voting right in the LLC from what I understand. And that makes it a security that I'm technically selling you as an investor. So, um, because of that, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission has to be notified and, and they have to know who your investor is and all you know, the basic information on them and me and make sure we're not terrorists and you know, make sure yes. we're not uh, 
uh, unqualified to start a fund in America, right? So that's pretty much it. Um, no, and I, go ahead. So yeah, but um, you know, yeah, that's it. I, I appreciate that answer. No, it's because it, I feel like you're doing it very honest, and and because uh, uh, you know most people are not going to do it that way, unfortunately. But but it's you know this investor is investing, and they expect a return. Right, they expect a return on their money, and they and they're not they don't have an active role in the business, and so therefore you you are you're selling them a security, uh, and so you know I'm not an attorney, I don't think you are either, so just, you know just put that out there. However, you know I feel like you're doing it correctly. You know you have an investor who expects a return, um, and so anyway, I appreciate your transparency and and your you know doing you're doing it the way you're doing it. So, uh, but so you know syndicating a six unit, what's going to be the most difficult part about that process? Well, it is a small building, you know, so you lose one tenant, that's 18% year income, right? So that's tough. I'd rather be doing 25 unit pluses. Um, but since we focus on North Jersey, that's not always an option. There's a lot more discounted six units for sale than 25 units around here. So we can make them work. I mean, that six unit we bought in January, we're absolutely crushing it on the syndication. Our, we're, we're blowing our models out of the water, really, on, on the building, which is great. You know, we're doing better than we had expected. So, um, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles on that one. Um, they're not all like that. You know, most of them we do pretty much a little bit above where we expect to do. And that's how you want to structure them. You don't want to set the bar too high, you know, over promise uh, and under deliver up as you want to do the opposite, you know, under promise and over deliver. So um, we were doing very well on this building. We've turned over, I think, three of the units. Uh, and uh, the rent roll went from a measly $500 a month to uh, just a little over $2,000 a month. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big increase. Wow. Congratulations to you as well for finding that deal. So how are you finding deals like that? Uh, direct mail marketing uh, is really our, uh, you know, our biggest uh, source of deals, but also uh, we do some online marketing. We do billboards. We uh, have a great really? network of um, investors and brokers. Uh, we found a great deal in Berkeley Heights, the broker. We actually called them because uh, Seth connects with different agents and brokers. We connect with them and it was kind of like a, Hey, how you doing? You got anything, any pocket listings, right? Any, any new stuff coming up that, you know, isn't on the market yet. One of those calls. And he's like, yeah, actually I'm thinking about selling my own building. Ended up being a great deal for us and uh, bought 14 units in Berkeley Heights for under $2 million, which is a phenomenal deal here, in North Jersey. Um, so we, um, it's all about who, you know, uh, you know, really with the commercial real estate, it, the good deals are not sitting on loop net, uh, not in this market at least. And, uh, so yeah, it's uh, direct mail marketing and, and knowing the right brokers and wholesalers. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, but I haven't heard anybody say they're doing billboards. Tell me about that. Well, I, I can't say they're a great investment. Um, they did get us a very good deal. So I actually bought a billboard in downtown Newark, right outside the Home Depot, thinking you're dry, you're leaving the Home Depot, you're like pissed off about how your home keeps breaking, and uh, you're ready to sell this thing. So it says we buy houses, a big, big billboard. And I got a great deal offered. I made 60 grand. So I'm like, all right, awesome. The great deal. I made 60 grand. I'm going to take 40 of that and put it back in the billboards. Right. And, uh, I, um, I don't think I got another deal out of it. I'm still tracking some things and I think they're still up. Even, you know, the cool thing about billboards is when you're done paying it, if the guy, if they're painted on buildings, like some of mine are, you know, they don't take them down right away. So they're still up. We're still getting calls, but um, they're going to probably take it down soon because I, I didn't renew the contract. But, um, you know, it, it, so yeah, you, you know, marketing's hit or miss. Um, I, I probably, I think I have one more deal kind of brewing from it, but it's not like a home run deal. Um, and um, this is a tough market right now to find good deals in. It's very hard. For sure. So, so are you self-managing all of your properties? We have a management company. Yep. We have an amazing property manager, uh, Lena. She runs our uh, property management uh, company and we have a good uh, staff of well, independent contractors that work with us. And uh, so, yeah, it's a good, uh, good, well-run repositioning company, right? Because a lot of management companies just want to call plumber when the pipe leaks and collect the rent uh, when it's due. And uh, it's not really what we do. We, we buy mismanaged buildings. We have to remove the bad apples. We have to figure out different ways to make uh, income on the property. Uh, we have to figure out ways to get our expenses down and, and save money uh, every day. So uh, it's, it's really above and beyond what a normal management company does. And that, that allows us to really control the assets and just do better with the buildings. It is, you know, building your own management company something you recommend to other people who are, you know, syndicating deals? 
Uh, yes, if you're doing it locally, I'm pretty unique. A lot of syndicators raise the capital, like maybe in New Jersey, New York, because there's a lot of wealth here, and then they move it into uh, Austin, Texas, or North Carolina, or right uh, Chicago, or whatever, you know, uh, Buffalo. And I get it. There's emerging markets, uh, Atlanta, right? So there's markets you hear about. Everyone's going down there, and that's great. That's cool. Um, but I'm really more about um, controlling the asset, completely um, overseeing, you know, the renovations, the management of it, and really being hands on. I've had a bad experience with management, right? They stole money from me. I told that story. So that uh, kind of scared us straight. And we realized, wait a minute, we're borrowing people. Well, we're not borrowing, but I'm signing on the dotted line for your money. I'm putting my name on the line. And I'm going to go and hire some third-party management company to manage it. Now, that line right there isn't great for other syndicators. But for me, you know, I've developed a company here that really works hard to find good deals and manage them to the T. So um, that's what we do. It's what we do best. Um, some guys are really good at managing management companies. But to me, that's more risk. Hmm. No, I've, I've heard both sides of the coin and, and, and they, they both sound favorable, you know, <laughs> depending on, you know, the shoes that you're in, I guess. And, and, uh, uh, but it, it sounds like, you know, just like those people that were still in the money from you're selling, you know, as many leases as possible before they left town. Right. Um, and so, uh, that, I mean, it's something to think about, right. You know, I mean, if you're not going to manage it yourself, you know, how well are you vetting this team and, and the, the new company that you're hiring? So, uh, but tell me, you know, Aaron, what's, what's been the hardest part of this syndication journey for you, um, you know, from the first deal to now? Well, um, you know, a real syndicate is a long-term investment. It's a five-year investment. So we started with flipping houses and we built a lot of relationships with short-term active investors that were looking for quick returns over a year. Those investors are very different than long-term syndicate investors, which tend to be more passive, uh, more laid back. And these people are busy living their lives, running around, you know, being doctors, being contractors, uh, work, being bankers, working hard and, and, and making, making their money. So, you know, getting connected with them, teaching them about real estate, explaining what we do, how do we make, what's a, we make money with a refi cash out, you know, that's a kind of a tough topic to explain to someone who's not in real estate. So I have to teach, you know, teach, educate, uh, you know, be a thought leader, always know exactly what you're talking about, how you make money with your business, know how you make money with other people's money. And if you can explain that properly and in a way that people want to listen to, uh, then you know, um, that, you know, that'll help, help you raise capital and that, but the, you know, the hardest challenge I think has been turning investors um, over to that, that new thought process of investing long-term, but also finding a good deal is really our day-to-day -day challenge. When we find a good deal, the money is, is pretty quickly raised. Um, it's about finding a great investment opportunity. Nice. It is very difficult to find a good deal right now. I think everybody listening would agree with that. And I appreciate how you've elaborated on how you're finding deals some right now as well. But tell me, how, how are you preparing for this potential downturn, you know, quote, you know, downturn that everybody's talking about? Well, you know, we buy in areas that are near train stations that get you to Manhattan in less than an hour. We buy in good middle of the road properties. We're not buying the fanciest real estate. We're not buying the lowest rung real estate. We're really buying class C plus and B real estate. Um, and whether your stocks are up or down, middle, you know, middle class families, working class families, uh, blue collar, white, white collar fam families pay their rank. Uh, when you know they need to go to work and live in a home, so you know my opinion in a recession or in, or in low economic times, the top end of the market and the bottom of the market get hit the hardest. So you're better off right in the middle. Uh, Manhattan is not going anywhere. People are always going to need to go into Manhattan and commute and work there. In my opinion, at least as far as uh, we can see for the uh, next 20 years, and um, we work off the Manhattan demand to commute into Manhattan and work near train stations here. And there's a lot of demand. Uh, there's really a lack of housing here in North Jersey. Um, there's a huge demand for it. You know, a big part of what we're looking for now is um, misuse of, of land or property and rezoning it to residential real estate because, you know, we really don't need more office space. We need more apartments and, and condos and or people, those for people to live, you know. What's a way that you have recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Well, uh, boy, every day I'm recalculating, you know, just looking at different parts of my business, trying to work on it and not just in it. Um, 
And uh, so, I mean, that alone is a very important skill and, and to, to, to grasp as a business owner, always be recalibrating, always be looking at, you know, okay, the market's changing. You know, three years ago, uh, we made a million bucks uh, wholesaling real estate off the sheriff sale auctions. We made hay while the sun shine, you know. Now we're lucky if we make half of that and we're, we're finding the same amount of resources to it. So, you know, that's tough in the market right now. So, you got to recognize, you know, uh, those opportunities. We, we jumped on it real quick. We put a million dollars into that part of our business very quickly and, and we turned it around and, and doubled it essentially, you know, so um, recognize those opportunities without your ear to the market and, and always knowing your market and kind of seeing what's coming up, um, you know, then, then you're not going to be ready for that. So the syndications, buying discounted apartment buildings, we do see a shortage of housing in a lot of inner city markets in North Jersey. Uh, we see a demand for nicer housing. There's a lot of old real estate here. It needs to be redone. A lot of worn out landlords, people retiring, baby boomers that bought some 30, 40 years ago and tired of self-managing it. Um, so we, we look for that opportunity and we improve the buildings and the real estate and give the people a better quality of life because a lot of outdated real estate here in Jersey. What's your, what's your best advice for caring for investors so they want to keep investing with you? Um, well, uh, be transparent, you know, be, uh, we communicate a lot. Um, every month we have updates. I like to have detailed updates, um, that you can understand, um, and really, you know, clear, transparent information on what's going on with the property. People learn a lot about real estate and development and, and management with us, um, have good financials. We have really tight books. Um, our, our bookkeeper and our accountant are a completely separate a party, a company, uh, their professional bookkeeping and accounting company that take care of all of our bookkeeping and accounting and tax filing. So that's good. There's a separation of powers. It's very important in a business. And, um, you know, so, so by, uh, by those, those, but you train pan transfer, having good books, good accounting, being quick to get the financials out to our investors. You know, and then of course, when you're doing the calculations for the returns for your investors, be really conservative. You know, we have a 20% lease loss, meaning we'll take 20% of our net lease amount coming in and we'll throw it in the garbage, assuming it'll be exhausted on something. That's super high, you know, and that's super conservative, 20% lease loss of the 20% net uh, income. So, um, you know, a conservative measure like that allows us to kind of set the bar a, a pretty uh, attainable point and then o over deliver under promise and over deliver. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Getting up and working hard every day probably is like, you know, I mean, there's, you know, I've been a good public speaker, but there's no secret, man. You know, it's busting your ass. I mean, you got to work hard. You know, there's been days you lose money, you make money as a small business owner, and you got to get up every day and, and put a smile on your face and make things happen. Uh, I learn every day in this business. If uh, I'm not adapting and learning and growing from my mistakes, then I, I'm not a good business owner. Um, so just, I'm not particularly, I'm not a genius. You know, I just work hard. I'm a decent public speaker. I understand finances. I have a good business partner, really good business partner, good team under me, but um, hire the right people too, you know. <laughs> awesome. No, that's, that's, and it's spoken really well, I think. You got to get up and work hard. That's to put it as simple as possible. Um, but it, tell us how you like to give back. Well, I work with three different Rotary groups here uh, in uh, New Jersey. Rotary is an awesome group, an awesome club to uh, participate with and get back to. If you're not a member, definitely join one of your local chapter. We work with Mission Clean Water. Uh, they bring clean water to impoverished areas of Africa. And, uh, we just work with Pedals for Progress and uh, all different types of nonprofits that we work with, with that the Rotary Club generally introduces us to. Um, so definitely been a good experience working with Rotary. Nice. And, and so, Aaron, it's been a great show. I've, I've enjoyed just, you know, you're talking about how you're syndicating smaller properties. A lot of people think, you know, you can't do that. And I appreciate you coming in here and saying, no, you know, we're doing it and, and you're making money doing it. So I uh, appreciate, you know, you talking about that and elaborating. And, but then also, uh, importantly, tell, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you. Sure. So our website is peoplescapitalgroup.com. It's peoples with an S, peoplescapitalgroup.com. And uh, yeah, we're located in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. So if you're local, uh, come to one of our networking events. We have it on the second Tuesday of the month and the fourth Friday of the month. Um, and then I have webinars. We teach how to self-direct your IRA. 
We teach uh, how we do our syndication in about three different webinars every month. So our meetup group is New Jersey Real Estate Network, and that has over 3,300 members on meetup.com. That's New Jersey Real Estate Network. So if you join that network on meetup.com, you'll, you'll get our invites to events and webinars. You can jump on a webinar if you're not local. Um, but our events are really cool, and especially if you're looking to you know, network with other like-minded investors, definitely try to come out to one of our events. Um, but peoplescapitalgroup.com is our website. Thank you for listening to The Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital making a difference one investor and one child at a time connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success